Hey guys, it's Lauren from Girly Knits and I'm super excited to be back today with another machine knitting tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to knit lace on your LK150 using the Needle Beetle. So first I'll be talking more about the Needle Beetle and what it is and what it does and how you can use it on your LK150. Then I'll be doing a show and tell of the lace pattern that I'm going to be demoing today and show you some new designs that I've just come out with featuring this lace pattern. Then I'll be talking about yarn and what yarns are good for this project and showing you some examples. And then last I'll be demoing how to knit the lace chart and how to approach a chart using your Needle Beetle and how I use the Needle Beetle to knit the chart. Now if you want to knit this lace chart without the needle beetle you can of course do that too but in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how the needle beetle makes it so much easier and so much faster and it's just a really amazing tool. So first of all the needle beetle is this handy little uh, knitting machine accessory designed by Chris Crafter so if you want to check it out you can go to chriscrafter.com where she sells this and I believe she ships worldwide and if you do have any specific questions about the needle beetle such as if it will work on your machine or anything else you can definitely reach out to her and she will let you know. So basically what the needle beetle is is it's a needle selector where you select the first eight stitches of an eight stitch repeat pattern and then you slide the needle beetle across and it'll repeat those eight selected stitches all across your bed and it will put them in D position. So this is really helpful if you're doing stitch patterns or if you're doing color work and then in this demo today I'll be showing you how to use it to knit lace. Now I'm going to be honest I haven't done stitch work or color work with it yet so I haven't tried that when I got it I just immediately thought oh this would be awesome for lace and so I tried it with that and then I took off with it and made all these garments and just had a lot of fun so that's what I'll be showing you today now if you've never knit lace before I do have another tutorial where I show you how to read a machine knitting lace chart and how to translate that to your machine so if you want to check that out I will link to that below but otherwise I will be also showing you how to read the chart and this demo and then how to program the needle beetle to help you knit the chart. So to show you some things that I've made using the needle beetle and this lace pattern, I had designed a hand knitting pattern called Take a Bow Years Back and that was something that I wanted to try translating onto my machine. So I actually went into a machine knitting Facebook group. There's actually a Facebook group for the LK150 specifically and if you're a machine knitter and you're not in any Facebook groups, I would highly recommend them. They're a lot of fun. People just post like really inspiring things and they share with their working on and if you ask a question like there's so much knowledge there and so many people willing to help so if you're looking for community with knitting machines I would highly recommend it and I also just started my own machine knitting group for you guys in case you like my tutorials and you've been making things I would love if you joined the group and shared what you're making and I can interact with you guys and if you'd like to ask me questions you're of course welcome to there as well so I will link to that below so when I started using the needle beetle I went into the LK150 group and I posted a picture of what I was doing and what I was making and I asked you guys what you would like me to design using this lace pattern and you guys really loved my take about top. So I've changed the pattern a little bit. When I asked you guys I actually got requests to make the neckline a little bit lower and to add sleeves and so I've actually modified the pattern so you can do both of those things and I think it turned out so cute. So right here you can see I'm wearing this little sweater top. I'm between like a size small and a medium and this is a size small so it's it's a little more fitted and as you can see like the sleeves are very fitted but I also made it in a size medium which you can see if you want like a looser fit you can size up or down based on your fit preference and in the pattern there's going to be a wide range of sizes it comes in extra small to 3x so you have um, a lot of range like depending on how you want it to fit this is the size medium right here as you can see this is really cute the yarn that i used for this sweater is knit picks gloss dk and that is a merino and silk blend it's like really beautiful really awesome it blocks amazingly so i would actually highly recommend this yarn for this project this is the yarn that i used for my original knitting pattern design as well the yarn that i'm wearing uh, for this top i'm wearing here this was actually a limited edition yarn from knit crate which i have a subscription to so Unfortunately, it's no longer <laughs> available, but it was also a merino and silk blend, so it's very similar to Gloss DK. So another request I had seen, it was a comment on one of my other tutorial videos actually, was a request for a beach cover-up, like a lacy beach cover-up. And so that inspired me too. So you guys totally inspire me. So if you 
have suggestions, like, and you comment, believe me, I take them into consideration and it's really helpful to know what you want. So I thought it would be really fun to use this pattern to create a little beach cover up. I happen to have some yarn from Knit Crate as well that was a cotton yarn. And so I made this same design in the dress version and it just turned out so cute. This yarn was so much fun. It was kind of variegated. So when it was knit in lace, it created this sort of like tie dye effect and it looks so cute over a bathing suit. I wore it to the beach and it was just so fabulous. And I even made a little I-cord belt strap, which there's instructions for in the pattern. And so in this pattern, you can either knit sleeves or you can just do these bands on the sleeves if you want a short sleeved garment. So it's really up to you. There's a lot of options. There's some different neckline options as well. And then this last project here was one I actually tried using acrylic. You, you might have noticed I actually really do like using acrylic. <laughs> I just like that it's like machine washable and it's just so easy to care for. And of course it's affordable. And so I did try using uh, Knit Picks Brava Sport for this version. And then so for this version, I actually just knitted plain stocking it up to the top and then only did the lace at the top part. Um, which is kind of a cute idea too. If you don't want to wear a tank top under your garment, you could do this instead and just have a little bit of lace if you just want a touch of lace. I don't know if you can tell, but I just, it doesn't block out as nicely as the animal fibers and the cotton. So if you're using acrylic, you have to be really careful when blocking it and it doesn't necessarily respond as well to wet blocking. You have to like steam block it, but then you have to be really careful because you don't want to get too close or it might melt. So I wouldn't really recommend acrylic but um it's a cute idea as well and this also has the little armbands instead of the sleeves and then also if you want a smaller project just to try out this lace pattern i have these leg warmers so these i initially designed hand knitted so i made these hand knitted with these cute little bows and then i decided to try this on the machine this was the very first thing i tried out so this is the machine knitted version and uh, it looks you know mostly exactly the same just on the machine so I have hand knitting and machine knitting pattern available for the leg warmers as well and these are super fun and that they come in a bunch of sizes so there's a girl size a tween size and then three adult sizes based on your calf measurements so um, you should be able to find a size that works for you if you want to make these leg warmers and you can have them over the knee or a regular length and, um, and in this demo today, I'm going to be basically showing how I made this little boot topper, which is basically just like the leg warmer, just, you know, like a third of the size. <laughs> and it's just two repeats of the lace pattern. So to knit this, we just started off with mock ribbing and then we worked two repeats of the lace pattern. And in the demo, I'll actually be showing you how I do this latched up ribbing here and how I bind off. And I actually show you how I steam my lace while on the machine, which is something you might enjoy doing. I like doing it as a go along just to see how my lace is looking. So I'll be demoing that today. So yeah, cast on, if you just wanna make a swatch, you can just cast on with waist yarn or however you wanna cast on. Another finish that I did, as you might've noticed in the dress pattern, is this one actually starts with another eight stitch lace pattern to create this scalloped edge. So I won't be demoing that, but it's in the pattern if you want this like cute little scalloped edge. And also just another thing, you could really work any eight stitch lace repeat pattern and apply those to any of these designs and just insert it in. So you can definitely do that as well. One thing to know about the needle beetle is you do need an eight stitch repeat pattern. Um, you can't do different sizes. <laughs> it only does the eight stitches, but as long as you find an eight stitch pattern that you like, you could apply it to this or you know something else. Hopefully in this tutorial, you get the idea of how you can make it work for you. And just in case you're wondering like how long it takes, lace is a little more in depth. It's definitely more end up than doing stockinette but um, I made each like front and back of my garments in about a day so like the front took a day the back took a day and then the third day I probably did the finishing like the neck band and the arm bands and seaming it together so you could definitely do it like fairly quickly although it is a little more time intensive and then these leg warmers I timed myself and I was actually able to do it in two hours which is pretty impressive so it is more hands-on but it still can be a quick project depending on what you're making. All right, so I have just finished a full repeat of the lace pattern here, and we're about to start a new one, and I'm gonna show you all 26 rows of the lace chart. So what I like to do when I'm knitting this pattern is reset my counter every time I'm knitting a new repeat. So I just hit row 26, so I'm just gonna set it back to zero, and then we can follow the chart and so we know which row we're on. So as for how many needles you'll need, you'll want a multiple of eight 
plus three, which is what I'm going to show you. And the reason I do that is because I like having a selvage stitch on either edge for seaming. That's what we do with the leg warmers and with the top and dress pattern. If you're just making a swatch and you're not planning on seaming it together, you can just cast on one additional stitch, so a multiple of eight plus one. Uh, you just want one extra stitch at the edge here since there's an eyelet at the end of this pattern and you'll want that extra stitch there. So you can really do either one, but I will be showing you having a selvage stitch on either edge, one to start and two to end. Another tip for using the needle beetle is I find that it's helpful to have your eight stitches here since the needle beetle is gonna repeat the first eight stitches across the row. So I actually have nine here because I'm gonna have this selvage stitch and then our eight for our stitch pattern that's repeated across the row. So if you um, only had one extra stitch, like I was saying, if you're not doing seaming, you could just have eight here, but I find that it's helpful when casting on. So when you're looking at your chart, you can double check and make sure that you selected the correct needles. I just find it's easier to have that visual there just to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. Jumping into the pattern here, <laughs> As he has gotten so comfortable with my machine, a little too comfortable, she keeps jumping on it while I'm working and she doesn't seem to understand that there's things happening here. So um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, maybe, all right. I guess she can stay if she stays there, but a lot of times she likes to sit on my machine. <laughs> okay, so taking a look at the chart, looking at row zero, I see that that very first stitch on the edge is gonna be our salvage stitch. And one cool thing about the needle beetle is if you pull out a needle to deposition, it will actually ignore it. So this is really handy if you're doing any sort of stitch pattern and you don't want that first needle incorporated into your pattern. If you just pull it out to deposition, it'll just copy the next eight and you don't have to worry about it. And you could pull out even more if you wanted to. So we have our eight here. And just taking a look at the chart at row zero, the way that I approach this row is I'm gonna pull out where I see the eyelet. So I'm gonna count one and then I see an eyelet on this second needle here, and then one, two, three, four, five, and then I see an eyelet on that last needle there. So for the needle beetle, we're selecting needles to C position, and then it's going to copy those across the row and select them to D position, and that's gonna help us see what needles we wanna transfer for our lace pattern. So I'll just go ahead and show you. I've got my needle beetle here. It just kinda goes on your machine and, and slides along, and you don't have, it doesn't attach like the carriage would, but you just can take it off and on really easily. So I'm just gonna go across. As you'll notice, it makes a rattling sound. That's normal. <laughs> I did ask Chris about that and she said, yes, yeah, so it is a little bit louder than your carriage and that's fine. And just a quick tip, if there's any issues with your needle beetle, just make sure that the screws are tight. Sometimes they can loosen up after using it for a while and if there's any problems, it's probably related to the screws. So as you can see, it just repeated these two stitches across the row and now we know which stitches we want to transfer. So again, looking at our chart, I can see that this very first stitch is going to be transferred to the left to do a decrease there. And then this stitch is going to be going to the right. So it's pretty simple. We're just repeating that across the row to the left, to the right. Um, as you'll notice, it's, you know, you can memorize this pretty easily. <laughs> and, um, and it's pretty simple too, since the eight stitches are repeated all across the row evenly so that you'll notice that at the end, you'll also just end with one going to the left and one going to the right. And then the needle beetle also selected like this very last needle, but since that's our selvage stitch, we're just ignoring that. And then we're just gonna go ahead and knit these two rows. So every lace row, you'll notice, I just wanna push these guys to be positioned to make sure they're in work. Sometimes when we're doing lace work, they can get moved around and we don't want them to go out of work. So just gonna set that up and then we're gonna hang our weights. So I actually noticed with lace, it's really helpful to have more weight on your knitting. So I use my cast on comb just to hang this across there and you'll just see that it's helpful. And then I also hang my weights at either edge. And um, just in case I didn't mention this, we're working at a tension of T3.5, but of course you could work at any tension you wanted to work this lace pattern if you're just making a swatch or something. But that's the tension that I'm working with. And then we're just gonna go ahead and knit these two rows. All right, so now we're on row two of our lace chart. And again, to start every lace row, you just wanna pull this needle out to deposition. And again, so our beetle will ignore it and we'll select the next eight stitches. So looking at our chart, this time I see the eyelets fall on the third needle 
and the seventh needle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And again, we're just going to press. And then similar to the last row, we're going left and then to the right and then the left and the right, just all across the row. And then again, we're just going to knit those next two rows. That was easy. <laughs> Okay, Izzy, what are you doing? All right, so now we're on row four of the lace pattern, and this one is going to be a little bit different because we have a double decrease. So for this one, instead of selecting all of the eyelids, I know that when I work my double decrease, I'm actually going to do that in one maneuver. You may have seen me do this in my last lace video where we're basically to do the double decrease, we're selecting a needle to the left and then to the right, and then we're gonna hang it on the center stitch. So for this, row, I'm actually going to choose, let's see, the second stitch, which is the eyelet, and then I'm going to hop over to the sixth stitch, which is the needle that I'll be using for my double decrease, and select that, and then we're going to be selecting that eighth needle where there's another eyelet. So this might make a little more sense when I show you, but um, for this row, those are the needles that I select, and then again, across. And so the way that I'm going to approach this is as we see on the chart, this one goes to the left, and then we have our double decrease there. So to do the double decrease, we're going to select this stitch, and then we're gonna grab the stitch over to the right, and then hang both of those on that center needle. And then we'll see this one goes to the right. And now we're starting again on our eight stitch repeat, so we're gonna to go to the left, double decrease, and then to the right. And just to give you an idea, if you're wondering why I didn't select that other eyelet, I could have done that and I can show you how that would look. I do find this easier because it's easier to see where the double decreases are, whereas if I had selected them this way, every other needle is selected so it gets a little more confusing to know where you are and, and what you're supposed to do because we have <laughs> needles going different directions. But if you did prefer to do your double decrease transferring one stitch at a time, it would basically be the stitch going to the left, and then this stitch going to the left on that middle stitch, and then this stitch going to the right on that same needle. And that produces the same effect as the other maneuver that I showed you. As you'll see, both result in having this left stitch first, and then the right stitch second, and then lastly, the stitch that was already there. So you get the same effect, it's just with um, the other way of doing the double decrease, you can just do it in one maneuver. So I figure most people prefer <laughs> doing it that way, but you could really do it either way you choose. I found that I preferred to do it this way. And we're just going across, working the pattern. and work those two rows. So for row six, you'll notice that row six is the same as row two. So I'm just gonna count one, two, three, and then one, two, three, on that seventh needle. And that one's just gonna be exactly the same. see this just becomes like super mindless like you really don't even have to pay attention that much to what you're doing you just kind of get in the rhythm of it and it's just like you know you, like I know for me I don't even really think about it when I'm doing it and so um, 
Yeah, it's just so nice that it does all the thinking for you. Like, you don't even really need to look at your work because as long as you select the first needles correctly, you know, it should set you up to do it correctly. Of course, you can run into problems if you <laughs> don't select the first date the way they're supposed to. Um, if you do do that, what you'll probably have to do, and you already ran your needle across, you'd probably have to go back and transfer each stitch back on the needle and then restart again. But, you know, it happens and that's totally cool, but that's just what you would need to do or you'd need to like visually just see what you're supposed to do. But um, anyway, go ahead. And then now for row eight, we're just selecting the sixth needle because again, we just have this double decrease going along all along the row. Like I said before, you could select both of these um, if you wanted to do it that way, but I just prefer to choose that one and then slide it across. And yeah, I hope you can see how this just makes <laughs> knitting life so much easier. I know in my last tutorials, like you had to, you know, look at your knitting all the time and the chart, but this just, um, this just simplifies it so much and, you know, prevents errors. So I really, really love using the needle beetle and I've really enjoyed it. Okay. So you can see those rows look good. Of course it is good to look at your work just to make sure that everything looks right, but, um, just move up my weights. Those so now when we're working rows 10 through 19, they're the same as what I just showed you. Uh, we're just repeating that again. So um, yeah, I'll just go through these and I can show you how, you know, once you memorize a pattern, it can just go a little bit quicker. So this is basically what I already showed you. So if you want to go back and see how I did it, we're just repeating what we did and I will catch up with you when we get to row 20. All right, so we've just reached row 20 and this row is just going to be a little different. So the way that I look at this row is we're actually going to be doing a two prong transfer. So we're going to see that there's an eyelet there, but that the decrease doesn't happen until two stitches later. And that, that slash in the middle, that represents a stitch that's moving from one needle to the needle next to it, but there's not going to be a decrease. And so the way that I approach this row, and again, if you're following any lace chart and you're wondering how to use your needle beetle, you could just kind of try like, you know, what would I do with my um, selector and just figure out which needles that you would want selected that you're going to transfer and then just program that here. So for this one, I know that I like to do this so that this first stitch that's left on work and then the second stitch and then, then it sees two here that we want to select and then that one's left alone and then two here because I'm gonna be doing a two prong transfer to the right and a two prong transfer to the left and that basically translates what we're seeing on the chart. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it here and then show you. So we're going two to the right to the left and yeah that is how that works and then these next three rows in the chart are exactly the same so you will just be repeating this row and then you'll have done a full repeat of the chart it's pretty awesome right noticed that 
this part of the lace pattern looks slightly different than the hand knitted version. Um, and the reason that your machine knit lace might look a slightly different than a hand knitted lace is because of the way the stitches are layered. So in the hand knitting pattern, the way that this part would actually be, if we wanted it to be exactly the same, we would actually have to transfer this stitch over to this needle and then do the two prong transfer so that they would be layered the same way that it was in the hand knitting pattern. Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference, but um, just in case you, you know, are very particular about, you know, you, the way you want things to look. I know when I first started machine knitting, um, I noticed that doing like neckline decreases and stuff, it looked different than hand knitting. And I was like, how do you do it the way hand knitting looks? And, and then my teacher said, okay, you just have to do, you know, an extra transfer before you do your decrease so that the stitches are layered that way. But, um, you know, I imagine if you're like me, maybe that's just too much work for such a minute detail. It's something you wouldn't really notice and, unless you were like really close up and, and really particular. But if you wanted to do that extra transfer, you could do that and get a slightly different look. But just in case you're wondering why it looks that way, but um, yeah, for the most part, I've, most part, I've been really pleased with how my hand knitting um, lace patterns that I've used have translated onto the machine. All right, so we're just doing our very last row here, 24. Again, it's the same selection. And then after we knit this row, I'm actually going to be doing a decrease and you knitting with Ravel cord um, because I'm going to also show you how I do the latched up ribbing that I do on the leg warmers. So you can just see how I do that. And then I'll show you seam blocking the swatch on the machine, which is something you may wish to do just to get an idea of what your lace looks like. So. Be showing you that as well, and um, hopefully you find the demo on latching up helpful as well. Okay, so for this last row, we'll just be knitting it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to decrease at either edge, and this is just particular to the leg warmer pattern, so it just fits a little more snugly at the top of your leg, and that's also why we're doing the ribbing, but this is just a particular thing in the pattern. It's not related to the needle beetle or the stitch pattern or anything. And then we're going to use Ravel Cord. This is a cool technique. If you ever need to identify a row to pick up, um, what you can do is place the Ravel Cord in slot two of your knitting machine. And I did try it in slot one, knitting it along with my main yarn, but I noticed that it's not as visible if you do that and you do want it to be visible. So put in slot two and then for this row, we're just going to just uh, carry it along with our main yarn. And then we can just take the Ravel cord out of our carriage since we're just using it for that one row and it'll be removed later. So this is just going to help us identify how far to latch up. I just find it helpful. Of course, this Ravel cord is almost the same color as my yarn, so it might be a little harder to see on camera, but you know, if you're up close and personal, you can see where the Ravel cord is. So right now, I'm just gonna set my counter to zero again, and I'm gonna go um, a couple dials down on my tension. So I was at T3.5 and I'm going to go down to T2, and then I'm just going to knit 10 rows. All right, awesome. So the way I'm going to show this to you, I'm going to do a chain bind off on our very last row. So we do wanna end with our carriage on the right. So that will be set up for that. And then I'm going to show you how to latch up. So I'm just gonna take these weights off, we get out our latch tool. And so what I'm going to do is start on the third needle from the right. And then we're just going to let that stitch go. And what I find is really helpful is if you just identify that row right above the Ravel cord and then you stick your latch in that stitch and then you just kind of yank down, you'll be set up to latch up. So as I can see here, we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine latches. And then 
Um, yeah, it's super simple. You're just slouching up to create a knit stitch for a rib. And then when you're finished slouching up, you just place it back on the needle. And then now I'm going to go and just do this every other stitch. Again, we're just identifying right above the ravel cord. And then we're sticking our latch in. And then <laughs> it's really fun to do that. I actually just discovered that yesterday. I don't think I'd seen anyone do it, but um, yeah, it's super fun rather than kind of like undoing it stitch by stitch. If you just like yank down on it, it just comes undone all at once. So you can add some fun to your latching up. And even though this kind of might seem like it would take a while, I think that it only takes about maybe 20 minutes to do the latching up for the leg warmer. So even though it might seem like a lot of time while you're doing it, in the end it doesn't take you know too much time. Of course another option if you would prefer is when we got to that last row you could have transferred your knitting to a um, knitting needle if you're a hand knitter and done the, the ribbing by hand. Um, for this gauge in particular, I found that a, a US 4 is good to do the ribbing to match the gauge and um, so yeah, you could do it that way. I did try doing mock ribbing <laughs> for the edge, but um, yeah, I just haven't found like a way to do it that I like. So if you know a good way, please let me know. I did watch um, Diana's tutorial. I'm sure you guys are familiar with Diana Knits. Um, and she had a very in-depth tutorial and it was awesome, but I tried doing it and I just didn't enjoy it. And I also didn't particularly like how it looked. I don't know. I was just like, there has to be an easier way. Like the binding off seemed kind of complicated to me and um, setting up for it. And so, you know, I feel like with machine knitting, like, you know, I want things to be fun and enjoyable. And I'm like, if I'm not having fun, then I don't really want to do it. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys know another way I would love to hear about your method because I definitely, you know, sometimes with like a cough or something, it's like you want that ribbed edge. And just another thing, I know some people also prefer to do their latching up every um, like third needle, like they don't do every other needle because you don't like totally need it for like a flat ribbed edge, like it doesn't have to be every other. So you could also save time doing it that way. So that's another option. And yeah, so I'll just go ahead and finish latching up and then I'll show you how to bind off. All right, so I'm just doing my last latched up stitch here. It should be the third needle from the edge. So again, this will give us those selvage stitches for seaming to make that easier. All right, okay, so we have a ribbing there. I'll just pull out all of these to make this a little easier. Then I'll hang my weights. And for this very last row, to ensure that we have a loose bind off with ribbing, you wanna make sure it's loose. And I know it can be a little hard to control your tension when you're binding off manually. So one thing I'm really a fan of is the chain bind off. So to do that, we're going to go up to a higher tension and that's gonna ensure that all of the stitches are loose. So I'm going to go up to T8 and knit one row. And then as you'll see, it just creates these really big loops, which are gonna ensure that we have an even and loose bind off. It's so nice because it just like does the work for you and you don't have to worry about the tension at all and it looks really nice. So, but before we do that, what I'm going to show you is steaming my lace swatch. I know you guys enjoyed this last time when I did it. I have this mini steamer, which is a lot of fun. And I just wanna show you how your lace transforms through blocking. So I'm just going to remove my Ravel cord. You know, this is probably gonna be easier if you do it after <laughs> you're done um, as opposed to on the machine, but I just don't wanna steam my Ravel cord, so I'm just going to remove it. And just so you know, you don't need to steam your lace while it's on the machine. You could just finish this and then wet block it, and I would advise wet blocking it anyway, but um, I just wanted to 
demonstrate. And also, when I when I did knit the tops and the dresses, I actually did like steaming them on the machine because it just gave me a better idea of like the finished length and how it was going to turn out. And you know, when I tried it on, like I just got a better idea pre wet blocking, but I still did wet block all of my garments. So right here, you can see the lace. It's sort of like puckers, and you know, it's not quite <laughs> the way we want it to look yet. And I'm just gonna show you if I measure it. So right now it measures about seven and a half inches. And you'll notice when we steam block it that it's gonna grow dramatically. So um, yeah, when you're knitting this lace pattern, it's really important to uh, make a swatch and block it as you intend to flock your garment and uh, measure it so you can estimate how long to make your top or dress because it can, um, it can vary between yarns and it is really important for knowing how it will turn out because as you can see um, on the machine, it might be a little deceiving about like the length and how it's gonna look finished. So I'm just gonna turn on my steamer. <laughs> All right, so now that that's going, we're just going to go ahead steam this and with this yarn since it's a merino wool and silk blend um, you can just get right up in there and steam it it won't damage it um, with acrylics you need to be more careful you might want to stand a couple inches back because it can actually melt and warp your yarn if you uh, if you do this <laughs> depending on it just really depends on the yarn. So that's why it's of course important to do a gauge swatch and um, you know, try things out. So you can like test it out and make sure that it's all good. But this one, you can just get right up in there. And then I like to seam these edges too. This does make it easier for seaming. If you're gonna seam your garment before you wet block it, then just get those edges and um, and then we can just go along on the other side as well. Just make sure we've got everything. As you can see, this lace is just blossoming and totally transforming into how it will look when it's finished, which is really gorgeous. And as I mentioned, we'll be wet blocking this too, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but just to give you an idea. So now I just want to measure it again to show you how much it grows. So before it was seven and a half inches and now it is nine and a half inches. <laughs> so yeah, that's why it can be, you know, before, until you block it, your lace can be a little deceiving. So uh, just make sure to make a swatch. Okay, so now we're ready to do our latch bind off. So I'm just gonna grab my latch tool here and to do the latch bind off, we're just grabbing this very last stitch, taking it off the needle we're grabbing that next stitch and then just pulling it through and doing that all across the row. This is super simple and one of my, it's becoming one of my favorite binds offs, especially if I'm just making like a swatch and I just wanna quickly get it off the machine. I think this is definitely the easiest way and it's easy to undo and it looks nice as well. So yeah, I've become a big fan. All right, so I'm just at my very last stitch and then just to end, we're going to break our yarn. We don't need to leave a special tail or anything. And then we'll just pull that last piece through. And then we'll just take a look. Yay, looks so pretty. And then just taking a closer look at that bind off, you can just see it makes this really beautiful chained bind off. And I think it looks really nice with the ribbing. So it's definitely an option. And as you can see, it's really stretchy as well. So if you wanted, you could seam this up and make a little boot topper. That's what I plan to do. And um, I hope you enjoyed knitting this lace. I hope you enjoyed this video and had a fun time knitting lace. I know I've been having a lot of fun, so I hope you did too. And if you'd like to see more tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video and comment below if there's something else you want me to teach. As, as I said in the video, I totally read your comments and I get ideas from you. So I would love to know what you'd like to learn and what you'd like to make. And if you do enjoy these video tutorials, the best way you can support me is by buying the patterns. That's the primary way that I'm able to keep doing what I'm 
doing. So if you <laughs> like these and want to keep them coming, uh, please keep that in mind. I have a ton available at girlyknits.com. You can find all of my patterns and all of the tutorials. I have a lot of hand knitting patterns and these I've been designing these machine knitting patterns and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I love interacting with you guys and I love to see your projects. So if you do make anything from my patterns, please share photos. If you post them on Ravelry, that actually really helps me a lot. I know when other knitters are looking for what they want to knit next, like there's nothing that compares to seeing what other people have made and how it turned out and seeing it on different people. So if you're willing to help me out, it would do a bit a huge favor if you would post your projects. I know it does take a little extra work, but it does really help me. So also if you're on an Instagram, you can come follow me. I'm at Girly Knits. And if you do make anything, tag me there as well. I would love to see. And of course, if anything else, just email me photos. I get so happy when I see what you guys create. As I mentioned before, you can also come join my Facebook group if you want to interact with other knitters that are using these tutorials. So I would love to see you there and happy to answer any questions you have. Thanks for joining me. Bye.